Gagne from Ludwig at 4.09 of this third period. Fatorek hits the crossbar. Did not go in. But now, wait a second. Brian Lewis may overall the good goal judge who never turned the light on. Let's refer back to our goal judge piece after the first period. The goal judge did not put the light on. And there is the goal judge well, going one-on-one -on -one with <laughs> Mel Bridgman. I think for good reason he didn't put that goal light on. I am sure that that puck and look hit at the Chico Resch. Incensed. Will Norris hearing it from Resch. From here, it did not appear as if it went in. It looked like it hit the crossbar and kind of came out. But the officials have overruled. That's where it hits, says Chico Resch. getting hot. They give the goal to the Rangers to tie it up at four. I didn't see it. That's what he says. Let's, Let's see if you it. see it. No. Well, now, where does it come down? No, he got it. Should not be the goal. Wasn't even close. Let's get a, another one. Chico Resch has got good reason to be upset. Granted, Brian Lewis does not have the advantage of the instant replay as do you viewers at home and us here in the broadcast booth, but I have not seen a goaltender as upset as Chico Resch was in a long, long time, and he has good reason to be upset. Through all the excitement, Gary, did, uh, did you see whether Brian Lewis had talked to the goal judge at all to get his opinion on it? I don't believe he did, and the goal judge never put the light on. Al, this is a perfect situation, as is in front of the Board of Governors now, as to the use of replays in specific situations in the penalty box area. It makes so much sense. We've got modern technology. Let's use it rather than right now, where we all know that that goal should not have counted. If the referee could simply go over to the penalty box and take a look at what we're about to see now, then unless my eyes are deceiving me, unless he says it hit underneath that crossbar, hit the net underneath along with the crossbar and popped out. I just don't know how it would have come out as quickly as it did well, without the twine really wrinkling there. Well, if it did indeed hit underneath, Resch did not see it but only heard it hit the crossbar. That's, right? Exactly. That is what I would think is the real key is if you hear that clink, as Resch most likely did, he would know that it hit the crossbar. So Fatora gets the goal, his fourth of the season, the assist to Fatia with 4.49, just 40 seconds after Gagne's goal had put the Devils in front. Chico, Resch is red hot. And how does this change the complexion of the final 15 minutes and 11 seconds of this one? Well, two things. Right now, if the Rangers felt that maybe they were just given a goal, they may just continue play as usual, but if the Devils, who obviously feel they were robbed, come out angry, it may be to their advantage. Now, getting back to that advantage of the instant replay that could be utilized in the penalty box area, Brian Lewis could have gone over it, taken a look, but yet he may still have felt, even after watching that replay, that maybe it did go up and underneath of that crossbar. It, well, you've got to be the judge at home, really, because in my eyes, I think that that puck hit the crossbar, but maybe in other people's eyes, they well, feel it hit the twine. Bill Carpenter feeling right now, in a game like this, you just can't give away a goal like that. Did you notice where Brian Lewis was when the shot went off? I was, uh, I was unable to notice his position. Good point. 